Blog Talk Radio. It is Sunday, August 27, 2017, and school is officially in. Yeah. It just it gets more and more oddly abrupt every week. Starts <laughs> in a different spot. That's cool. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> so, um, welcome to schools. In I am Mitch, and I'm joined today in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Not with me, but together in Philly, mm-hmm. somewhere on the north side where the Bat Cave resides. Um, <laughs> our two illustrious co-hosts of mine who are the avid readers and now what up what up hello everybody how you guys doing today could be worse i think we should like change these these our book segments to um read a book bitch (laughs) (laughs) i'm with it i'm with it (laughs) i just i typed that in when i was doing the Announced what when I was doing the uh, what's the name for the episode because after I saw, um, I saw, um, my man, it's always on Vlad. I can never think of people's Jamar, names. Anymore. Lord Jamar. When I saw Lord Jamar with that big sack of book challenge, I was like, read a book, bitch. Yeah, he really started something with that too. Shout out to Lord Jamar. Yeah, was- Shout out to Lord Jamar, and, and y'all need to read a book, and don't read a book. Okay, that I'm not saying don't read these, but read other books besides books for folks that don't read books, like hood books. <laughs> no Zane books. Like don't hate to play or change the game. Like don't read that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're gonna read that, read. them wow. joints are just literary porn. Exactly. If you're gonna read that's that, make sure you balance that that's, out. That's all. That's all it is. Balance uh, that out with something else, okay? They the, they the transcribed version of Showtime porn. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Zane book, but you got like you got like good books in general that just be about you know regular street shit. That's, that's, that's what Styles book was. Uh, yeah, that kind of shit. Invincible. That was a very no, good no. Movie. I don't. Mm-mm. I don't count Donald. Donald Goins is pretty good as far as street books go. That's like the upper echelon of street books. I'm right, talking right. about you know. Books called, you know, um, what about what about uh, Coldest Winter? That's a classic. Coldest Winter is a classic. That's all right. I probably, I probably <laughs> judge okay. that book by its cover. Um, Coldest Winter is, is just, you know, it's a little bit, you know, above hood book. Part of it, I mean, part of it's okay because it's definitely part of her story. And we're talking I about Sister first, Soldier. I remember when I first read that book, um, about five, six years ago now. But uh-huh. um, these girls was like all on my top. They like, you just reading that? Like, <laughs> classic. I'm like, oh, man. It's one of those. Okay, no. Red, that's a red flag right there. That's a red flag right there. <laughs> yes. If you tell me the coldest winner is a classic, I'm sorry, dog. I can't deal with you. Oh, man. Seriously. Like but no, we're talking about the coldest winner by Sister Soldier. For everybody who does not know what the hell that is. Um, so the two books we read today, in the title of our show, the Mo Better Blues, One Day It'll All Make Sense show, mm-hmm. um, Mo Better Blues, sorry, Mo Meta Blues. Meta. It's very meta. Meta. It is very meta. By Questlove and Ben Greenman, I guess, who kind of helped him maybe put it together partially. And, um... We're just kind of go around Robin and talk about some of the chapters that we like. So I'll start off because my chapters are before yours, Ann, I think. What chapters are you talking about, Aaron? Well, I got to. Oh, okay. My bad. Um, I didn't hear like a specific chapter that I like. It was just certain parts of the story. Um, okay. 
that I took an interest in. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I remember the part where he was talking about um, uh, 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 G. Dilla's funeral. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, how he didn't want to cry in front of everybody that was kind of, um, <sighs> fuck that, his grandma. Yeah, it, right. Well, yeah, DMX it is grandma. Yeah, it was it was one of those situations, but um, it brought me back to that whole um that whole masculine thing that we talked about in the uh, bromance episode. Yeah. I don't and, give a shit. But I, 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 I thought about it. Yeah. Go ahead. There's actually um well the part of the reason why these books are together too is is the same reason why we kind of did this before is because there's like a little bit of crossover. Yeah with these two as well because they both knew James so um they both talk about it that was it was that was tough for me those parts of the book and I I probably won't talk about them I'll let you do it <laughs> but um I like Quest Love setup in this book right I like how he like when he like the I'm jumping in at chapter three because chapter one and two, he starts setting the book up saying, it's not going to be a regular book. First of all, he starts talking back and forth to himself. <laughs> like in the first chapter. It, that was weird to me because I didn't catch that at first. Like, I it was funny it. as hell. Like I, right. like, I immediately I thought, knew what it was. Right. I thought that he was like talking to that editor of the book or whoever he was working with and on. I like that. No, but no, he was talking to himself. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly, I did it. I enjoyed Quest book. I'm, I read it, like I read it the one time when I read it on my own, but then when I found out we was going to do it for the show, I got like halfway through it again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep, I'm going to continue reading it after, after this episode airs. Yeah. Because it's, it's just that it's just that entertaining. It's it is very it's funny easy. so it's an easy read too. It is entertaining. Yeah, it really is. You know why it's an easy read, I think? Because we interested in stuff that he's talking about. Like he go into like details about you know, little uh the microcosms of the music mm. you know what I'm He, he really does. About, yeah, he's not just talking about, you know, um surface level stuff. Yeah, and I can, I can, I can, I could visualize some of the places yeah, like, he was talking about too. He got memories. Mm-hmm. He got memories that's based on like album covers and stuff. So that's dope. I relate. Me to and that. Aaron were talking about that. Like we really, really like, I like connected to that because I have the same kind of memory he has. Like I, like there are certain years that I know certain things came out because I connect records and songs with the years that they came out to events in my life, and that's the way I remember them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and he does yeah the same I, work, thing. I work the same way. Like Aaron will be like, "Oh, Life Is Good" came out in 2005. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> like, like, like how do you know that? Because I, know. Okay. I remember when, cause like I was talking to you all. Like I would say, I remember this came out in this year because I was teaching you all in 2000 and blah blah blah. And I went yeah. out and got this, and we all sat down. Like I'm, I I have memories connected to you guys to music. Yeah, B is probably the only album I remember the year it came out. <laughs> because I went, we, I went out and bought them. I just want you to know I, that, that, 13 50, that 1350 is. was hard for me to get together too. It was in the middle of the week. I ain't got paid of yet. It was. <laughs> I hadn't gotten paid yet. You know what? That. That's, a good, that, that's a good tie-in because there's a part where Questlove is talking about how he scor- has to scrounge together all these dimes. He said it was like 32 dimes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has to get together to be able to buy the new rap single, whatever it was, that came out the next week. Because he was like, I was on a mission to buy these rap records every week when they came out. And he it said... Was... Go ahead, Aaron. No, Aaron it, was, go ahead. It, was funny. it was funny to me hearing him talk about having a high Prince record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because Prince in my house was the shit. That's the holy grail. Now, see, holy I was grill. like him. Same thing. My mother, I grew up in a Christian household just like he did. I had to hide my Prince records. I couldn't even even let it known I was listening to Prince on the radio. Mm. Yeah. But you got to remember, like, you know, me and Anthony, we grew up in the 90s. 
Different so, time, different time. Yeah. At that time, time, Prince was already appreciated for what he was. Yeah, but he had also wasn't as, as dirty as he had. Like, you guys <laughs> missed the whole time. No, I, think he was, that like, was just, super sleazy. I think that was just in comparison to the other crap that was on the radio. Right. And plus, my... Yeah, that's true. My parents, my parents didn't care about that shit. They let me listen to that. And you know what it was? Because I think it was because rap was so vulgar at the time. Mm-hmm. Like, Prince was child play in comparison. It, I mean, it, it did get like that, but let's put this in perspective, okay? So I was doing this with a friend of mine the other day because she was forgetting how disgusting Prince lyrics really were. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about Little Red Corvette, right? Mm-hmm. And if, would you date a girl who had used condoms in her pocket? Absolutely not. Why would you put well, used condoms in your pocket? This girl had used condoms in it. He said Trojans and some of them used. They were in her pocket. That's, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> so he's out with this beautiful ass woman who he, he sees she has a pocket full of horses. Trojans and some of them used. So she has some unopened, and he said some. Some does not mean two. Some <laughs> is, the, the qualifier for some is at least three. She, she had a variety to choose from. <laughs> no, that means we don't know how many of those were used and how many of them there were new in the pack. Okay. Red flag. So, hello? Like, that's <laughs> gross. <laughs> like, that's really disgusting. Well, you Seriously. know, Prince and, Rick, Prince and Rick James was always known to get into them type of freaks, you know what I'm saying? Super freak type. But, and, and then he had a... Your mom. It, uh, well, that's more. Well, yeah, him and because uh, because those lyrics are um, to confuse everybody. Those are um, Rick James lyrics, but yeah, Prince had a song too. Um, when you were a mom, he talked about how his girlfriend slept in his slept with his best friend in his bed sheets, mm. and then made him sleep next to them in the bed in the same sheets. Hey yo, <laughs> no thank you. No, thank you. That's what I'm like, Prince was gross. He was some dude. There's nothing sacred. There's nothing sacred anymore. He had some shit with him, though, you know. But, I mean, we all loved him. And Questlove, Quest and um and D'Angelo bonded over their love of Prince. Yeah. Like, that's what, what was the, bonded um, him. I can't remember. I was just talking to Anthony about it before we uh, loved this. Um, I was talking about the, um, the D'Angelo, um, situation where he said where they was like um they had like memories they had like good memories bad memories and the oh, he was talking about memories. that song it was to um marvin gaze heard through the grapevine oh yeah yeah that was the one yeah yep and he said he played I me mean, he said i thought he was just kind of joking he said i played it on the radio one time when they were on the voodoo tour he yeah. said he looked he got stiff and looked at him like turn that shit off <laughs> but, okay, whoa. I was like, damn, what the? And he said it's something with something happened to him that was horrible in his childhood with that song that he had a horrible right. connection to it. Which, and did they I ever expound on what that was? No, nah, he didn't really talk about what it was. Not really, no. But I like how, and at the end of every chapter, um, he has a set list. Mm-hmm. He talked about songs and he talked about albums for the years that that those memories coincide with. That was really dope, I thought. I, I agree. I really I agree. like that. And a lot of the songs that he listened were songs that I liked too. I wouldn't say I connected mm-hmm. with them the same way. I don't know if it's possible it's, to it's, connect it's, with it the same way. It's different when you like listen to older songs after they're, you know, when they're not new. Yep. Because, like, um, I got, like, those type of memories. It's like, um... It means something different to us. Exactly. Yeah, it does. Like, for example, my mom used to always play, um... Mandy. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Barry Manilow's Mandy? Yeah. yeah, my mom loved Barry Manilow. Shouts to, shouts to Mama Lay. Everybody loved... Hey, her name was Lola. She oh, was a showgirl. <laughs> Everybody loves Barry. But anyway, um, 
the one I was thinking of particularly was uh, Jackie Wilson, Stop Dogging Me Around. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time I hear that song, it's like memories that come back to me that's like either bad or good. <laughs> like, she played it that much. I have one song that has really, really horrible memories for me, and it's because uh, it's connected to, like, some really bad trauma. And if I hear it, like... I've gotten better with it, though. I'm not as bad as I used to be. Like, now when I hear it on, I don't, like, immediately go into a flop sweat. hmm But it's, um, good or bad way, I keep sweat. My, uh, I'm fortunate enough that music is, like, the one thing, the one constant in my life that's only tied to good memories. That's, that's I don't have actually any dramatic. Good. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. It's just that one song really for me. Good. You always got something to say about uh, when your sister used to play cash money all the time. But see, those are just <laughs> what's the word? I, <laughs> like I dislike the songs she was right, playing, right. but I mean, I wasn't it wasn't traumatic or anything like that. Okay. I don't yeah. know, cause little Yachty is a little traumatic for me. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of speaking of that, I was telling Aunt off off air, like it was it's hilarious. So like chapter four, uh-huh. after chapter three, because chapter three is about the beginnings of it. Because he first he says, "I'm not gonna talk about my childhood." Then he talks about his childhood. Because <laughs> <laughs> chapter, chapter one, two was like, "I don't want to talk about my childhood the way." Because I mean, the, he he was telling the truth. Part of the reason why he didn't want to do it the way other people have done in memoirs is because. It is a little flat and unimaginative because it's like, it's like, okay, so they start telling their story and then all of a sudden the thing happens, the thing that changes them for life. And mm-hmm. then it's like a, a bolt of lightning hits you and oh my God, you're, I mean, you're, we're all waiting for that shit when you read it because right. it's like, oh, okay, music changed you and what song was it and what, you know, whatever. Right. Was it. He was a weird but, kid. He was, but I feel like that's how I was exactly the way he was. See, and that's what that's what I was talking about because, like, I feel like he didn't grow up in Philadelphia the same way people like me and Anthony did. I didn't grow up in Detroit like that. Mm. Yeah. He, he didn't. He spend a lot of time on the road. Like I know he performed a lot, but wasn't he on the road too with his pop? Yeah. His father and his mother um, were performing the whole time. His father was was in a doo-wop group. And then that doo-wop group saw a resurgence. And he's, what he was saying is true. In the 1970s, the 1950s started to pop again. Like, they became extremely popular. He was like, like you know, movies like American Graffiti and Happy Days. And um, uh, what's the movie, the, the TV show? Um, Laverne and Shirley. Like, it, like, the 50s were popular. All of a sudden in the 70s, everybody was going to see Grease. Like, so you know Doo-Wop you know came back. You know what Questlove made me realize when you talk about his childhood too? What? Is that it's not enough it's not enough kids that got anything to latch on to and focus on. Hmm. Like, all right. He could have been just because he was like on tour with his family or whatever, and he was mm-hmm. He could have went the other way. He could have been into the street shit like Black Thought was. Yeah. He you know definitely could have been. But because he was so focused, like, it was like all the other stuff that was going on in Philly didn't adhere to him. Well, he he was into, like he was saying, he was inside of that house. He was getting a Harvard-level musical education in there. Yeah. Right. Even well, that's before that's he even went to, to school. And the school he went to was very different. And he was privileged to go to that school. Apparently, Black Thought did enough street shit for both of them. It looked like it, yeah. Top five that are alive. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I also like the parts of the book where, especially in the beginning, where Quest makes that same journey with Black music that we talk about on the show. Mm-hmm. Like, he, 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 he builds the same journey that we always talk about. He's like, here's where it started. It went to this. It went to this. It went to this. And then it went to this. And here we are at hip-hop. And, and you see the exact same progression that we talked about on our lessons on this show. That it started out in one place. 
you know, and then it started dividing off and moving towards this and towards that, and then it went left. <laughs> and then it went left. Yes. <laughs> and apparently, it went according to his boy, because he at the end of most of his chapters, he has he's talking to his boy Rich. And the dude's name is Richard. Um, what's his last name again? Richard. Uh, I, I may be wrong for this, but didn't he pass? Richard recently? Nichols. Did Didn't he, he pass die? recently? Rich Nichols. Did Rich Nichols die? I want to say he did. Did he? I'm googling it now. Oh please, please, please! Oh no! Yeah, he he died in, in 2014. Oh no! May he rest in peace. Hey, his book was like right before that. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, I remember thinking because I enjoy his input in the book so much. Like I remember thinking I, did too. I would I would read a book, his own book. Me too. But, but he's he definitely a, he's definitely a music he was he was definitely a music snob. Like one hundred percent. Yeah, like he was talking shit about the rappers and light situation. Yeah, we were talking about that off air, and I thought, yeah, I was cracking up because the way he talked about that shit was how we talk about Lil Yachty. It was like he was like we were listening to because because plus love asked him. He's like, you didn't love rappers to light. He was like, hell no, I hated that stupid shit. He was like, we were singing all these, you know, these deep, meaningful protests songs in the 60s and 70s you know songs with you know just grit and heart it's, and, it's and, funny and, it's like, and then all of a sudden super sperm like did i march for the right for you to talk about <laughs> how you're gonna bust some girl out with your super sperm and do right. it do it do it do it do it like he was but he was like thoroughly it was disgusting. funny hearing him it was funny hearing him say that because like i got different issues with rappers of like listening to it in hindsight like i wasn't alive when the record was popping uh -huh. but because i know like you know the intricacies and the history behind it and you know the fact that lines was took it from grandmaster Cass and all that no stuff. not lines not lines. i didn't know that not by the way until i watched that uh that whole song was basically just yeah. that i knew that i knew that for a while before i even watched that documentary but um mm -hmm. like that wasn't my only issue with it though. My issue with it was like, um, this is the song that's presenting rap to the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That kind of speaks. Those. That kind of speaks to how it is now too. Well, hey, that's yeah, that, that's always our gripe though, is because then you hear well, Rich goes on to start talking about Public Enemy and how Public Enemy's first album, Yo Bum Rush the Show was vastly different from It Takes a Nation of Millions and how It Takes a Nation just like blew his wig back. Like he was like, he said that shit was phenomenal. So you see that there's a progression in it. Mm -hmm. Everything has to start from somewhere. Like back in the day when we started out with this rhythm and blues shit, we were in juke joints, you know, moaning slow and making little to no sense. It didn't stay right. there though. And it can go to some, it can go real quick, zero to a hundred from a soft melody to some brown thick of music. <laughs> it, it, that's true. <laughs> but I mean, it can be progressive and it has been. The issue and problem is it's gone back in the other direction. Yeah. I'm noticing that more and more. The more we talk about this, the more I'm looking at stuff and reading these books and stuff. Like I'm noticing that a lot of times it's just the translation to record that separates the situation. It is, because he was talking too about how, I believe it was him, Rich was talking about how hip hop, it really wasn't meant to be recorded at first. In its origins, it was meant to be True. experienced. It was alive. If you was, wasn't there, you missed it. And and there was something that, that you couldn't capture in those early mm -hmm. days with those like we we had to rewire ourselves to make records to make these recordings actually sound good because they weren't meant to be recorded. Exactly. They were meant for you to it to be live in the park. 
be watching people be boy to be listening to the DJ to to listen to people grab the mic like you it wasn't built for that at first so but the problem with the new generation they don't understand that part of it they don't understand that they feel like it's just supposed to be you know the way you hear it on record and it's supposed to be about some street shit automatically it's like no, well, well, you know what? That's why we get on this mic every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because because it's Man, gotta rest in, peace. rest in peace, Rich Nichols. Rest in peace, Rich Nichols. You were you were an amazing force just in this book. Mm-hmm. He was only fifty five. Oh man! But he he died from leukemia. Really? Yep. That's kind of rare in adults. I yeah. I usually when I hear folks dying from leukemia, they're like no older than twenty five, thirty. Yeah. Mhm. So, Aunt, any any favorite parts of the book that you like? I know you want to talk about Prince. <laughs> that was hands down my favorite part of the book. But um, I like the fact that. Like you said, he has that playlist, that track list at the end of mm-hmm. the chapter. Um, mm-hmm. I like the way he related each year to whatever music he connected to at that time. Because I'm bad, I'm bad with years myself. I couldn't tell you what year a certain album came out unless it's something that's established in stone, like Illmatic. Like I can tell you when Illmatic came out. Ninety four. Yeah, only because you're supposed to know that. I can tell you when year something came out, even if you know it was something that was like. Um, like he can tell you what year Joel right. Ortiz House Slippers came out. Right, I like can't I remember do. when. Um, I remember. I remember. You, I can't. You had that shit. You had uh, that for certain Royce Five Nine John. I couldn't tell you what year it came out though. That shit came out old four, dog. <laughs> I was gonna say 2002. But I remember that. I remember that because <laughs> around that time we was in, we was in this Mississippi class, and around that time I was waiting for a little brother's album coming out. See, see, because they was ready to come out with a uh, mental show. Oh, I remember that. I remember right. that too. And, and Matthew played that in the class. He damn sure did. Shout out to Mr. Matthew. Yeah. But um, I remember that for certain because like ain't nothing wrong with that. Right, and this is why I always got to hear a song that makes me remember it. Um, whether it be a single or whatever, it don't have to be a single. But hip-hop. as long as it's a song that makes you remember the album. Was it hip-hop? It was hip-hop. Love that track. And at the time, I didn't even know that was a single. Dead Press? I, re- I remember. No, he talk, he's no, still talking uh, about Royce. 45 Nine Jones. Oh, okay. Jones yeah, Premier. So, and he let me hold that CD oh, for yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. a day or whatever. And I was playing in my CD player. And like, we was like on, on our way to your class. We was on our way to other people's classes. And I would just listen to that mm-hmm. song. Like, even though I would listen to other songs, I would go back to that song and, like, you know, just memorize the words and all types of shit. And I remember that year. Like, it was, like, clear and everything to me. And at the time, like, everybody was listening to some other stuff. And I was just, like... Oh, nobody was playing the shit that we were playing. Like, <laughs> nah, nobody, nobody was nobody. playing the shit that we were playing that the, that the, um, me, you, and Aunt were playing in the classroom. That was right. just our, that was our sanctuary. Was nobody playing this shit in there. Yeah, I still remember when you passed out the lyrics to meet the parents. Oh yeah. <laughs> dope, dope, dope lesson. Yeah, I remember that day too. That was the poetry. Um, that was the the narrative poem. Yeah. yeah. That's another reason I gotta me, the way I listen to music is different. Like I gotta pick a part song sometimes because I don't particularly like blueprint too. Me neither. But it's songs on there I fuck with. <laughs> Like they distilled it. They picked the wrong songs for 2.0. <laughs> Are you I still picked, on that? I would have picked different songs. I would have picked different songs. Are you I'm sorry. still on that, Ant? Oh, I would have picked different songs for 2.0, but I digress. He had the right so idea, wrong Prince. execution. So, 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 tell us one of the Prince stories that you thought was funny, like real fast. The skate party. The skate party was priceless. That was like reading that the was episode hilarious. of the Paul show. It was, reading the episode was like, of the Paul show. <laughs> he had his little briefcase and you know you open it up and then I picture the scene from Pulp Fiction when they open the briefcase and you just see the gold shining on their face. It was a MacGuffin. It was a MacGuffin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everybody that doesn't know what a MacGuffin is, 
That's like a our MacGuffin is is a is a useless plot device that is pretty much moved used to move like uh-huh. the plot along in a TV show and or like, a, um, give a us movie. An give us an example. Um, um, Indiana Jones comes to mind. Yeah, or uh, again, the case in Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, yeah, the case. MacGuffin gets his name from um, Alfred Hitchcock movie, where they he used MacGuffin like pretty much every movie where <laughs> it's just it's like something is like, oh my god, we must find the Maltese. Like, what the fuck is the Maltese? We don't know. You just like you know we're going after it. We got we got to get the, the, the fucking Maltese back. You know, and no one ever sees it. No one knows what it is. You can't, you can't measure it, its value or its worth, or none of that. Just know nope. that everybody wants it. It's just, it's it a MacGuffin, perfect. and you go after it. Um, Prince was funny with that kind of shit too. Man, we lost a great. Man, rest in peace, Prince. He was a good practical fucking joker. Yeah, he was like the uh, the Alfred Hitchcock of music. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Alfred Hitchcock. I heard Alfred Hitchcock was like that too. Alfred Hitchcock would do like weird shit. He'd be at the party and like throw something blue in the punch or some shit. <laughs> yep. But see, I feel he like that's because Charlie Chaplin, because he used to Prince, love Prince Charlie Chaplin. Prince knows Chaplin. that everybody loves him. He knows <laughs> everybody loves him. So you yep. approach him with a certain reverence and right, all right. that. <laughs> and then he teases you for it. <laughs> Basically, he does. Yeah. I love that about him. And he. He knows that too. I was watching an interview with somebody the other day on Jesus and Mira. I can't remember her name, but she met Prince. And she was saying that Prince, she said, reading him is some otherworldly shit. She said, he knows that as soon as you get in his presence, she said, he has this shit like a magnet. <laughs> Just wait. And she said, so you're like, oh my God. And she said, he immediately puts you at ease. Right. It's different than like a regular celebrity. Like, uh huh. He's anything but a regular yeah. celebrity. That's like if that's like if DMX walked in here right now, like it would be DMX. So it's like you know what I'm saying, like Fuck that DMX is more Philly. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Watching DMX re- meet Rakim kind of changes my mind about that. Yeah, that was dope. Well, Rakim but is you know different what I like now. About that too? Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that um, you know, DMX is who he is. But he still got the respect for who Rakim is. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Uh-huh. A lot of cats these days, they don't understand that type of um, that type of mentality. They just like, oh, well, this dude. Well, Cassie on some street shit. So him and Mo's death shouldn't even be in the same realm. I, I, yeah, but at the same time, I feel like Cass would give credit where credit's due. Yeah, I think Cash would too. But, you know, when, but I'm talking about a regular person. Yeah. A regular person wouldn't see that. Yeah. I can see right now like XXX Tentacion walking into a room with DMX and being like, oh, hmm. Why is Kendrick riding XXX so hard right now? I, I'm telling y'all, I keep telling y'all that XXX is, I got my eye on this kid. I'm telling you, I see some shit. Yeah, I don't know I, why. I think we're missing something. I'm missing something. Mm, I'm telling you, I'm. I'm not even saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's, it's something. I don't know. But um. Know. But but so many people see this shit. Seriously, not. And again, I can't tell you what it is. It's another MacGuffin. I'm a no, I'm not a MacGuffin. <laughs> it was like you open the case and you're like, oh my god, that's beautiful. What is that? No, you know what I, you know what I was thinking about reading this book. What? Um, how uh, I came up with uh, the name for me is me. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it's what? not like um, it was just. It's not a shameless plug or nothing like that. It was just, um, it made me think about it because Quest was talking about how him and Black Thought came up with their names for the group. Mm-hmm. Square mm-hmm. Roots? Yeah, like it was yeah. like, but it was a bunch of different names before that. Like it was, uh, what was the other one? They had another oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, yeah, I can't Radio remember. Activity or something? Yeah. yeah. It was definitely better than that stupid name that Charlemagne the God came up with to call himself. Oh yeah, uh, I don't even remember what that was. That nonsense. 
it was, it was I'm glad horrible. he didn't pursue that. I'm glad he didn't it pursue was, that. It was like it was like Chip Van Winkle. Right. Or something Van something Winkle something. Right. But I came up I came up with our name. I was in the basement. We were in the Anthony Chris. Right? I was mm-hmm. in the basement. And I was thinking about how, you know, basically, you know, me and Anthony just started like recording because we felt like Music in general was in a bad. It was in a bad place. And um. Yeah, and how do you feel now? It's still in that. It's still in that bad place. Exactly. Like basically, stuff we talk about the show, like, it's certain rules. It's certain rules and guidelines that got uh, lost in translation. So like, I was like, mm. I was like, damn, lost in translation. That's a dope name for a group. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how we came with it or whatever. And um, I kind of thought about, I was thinking about that when um, Questlove was talking about them coming up with the names for the group. Like, the way he described it was, um, like, they basically... So they radioactivated. Right. But the way he was talking about it was like, he was trying to describe the group from the outside looking in. Uh-huh. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to do it like that, which mm-hmm. I thought was our group. Yeah, I like that. I really like love that quest is quest is the glue that holds this shit together, and most people really don't know that. Yeah, most people really don't know it. much about the groups. They don't. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't get it. I just don't. Nobody ever talks about the roots. But but we talked about this before. Like think about the circles they running in. They running in circles that's like that don't get paid attention to a lot anyway. But I, I don't get it either, though, Aaron. Like, everybody who I know, the folks that I know, know who the fuck they are. And it's like, all, like, every album is critically acclaimed. Every single one of them. Everybody knows, everybody that I know, know, you know, like, they're like the fucking new native tongues. Is what, yeah. what they are. Right. But... You, only music lovers are going to care about shit that's critically acclaimed. Only music lovers are going to care about that type of stuff. Oh, hey, you know, Cardi B is number uh, one right. with Bodak Yellow. Right, but think about think about the stuff that people say when they talk about her. Like, they don't really talk about her stuff being, you know, critically acclaimed. Oh, no, acclaimed. hey, they don't it's give definitely like, not they don't critically give, acclaimed. They don't give like no in-depth discussion on you know what they liked about it, that type of stuff. Like they don't go that deep. How do you in-depth discussion Bodak Yellow? That skip from Watch the Throne comes to mind when they be like, "Who cares? It's provocative." Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that that comes to mind immediately. But it's not provocative at all. It's not. It's not. <sighs> okay. I, like I, there's no way to have an in-depth discussion about Bodak Yellow. It's really not. And there are only a few to lot of times is that, oh, it's a vibe, it's a feeling. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just. I guess so. I mean, I get that some songs, like, I was listening to this freaking hip hop anthems the other day because of you guys, and I was trying to narrow that shit down to five, which is fucking impossible. (laughs) I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. It's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I was playing um, Top Billing. Which is like one of the most famous hip hop anthems of all time. Mm-hmm. And that song is about nothing. It's you know, but I mean it's just it's just as frivolous as is. It's not as mean spirited though. Mm-hmm. Our music wasn't as evil and no. mean like like this music in the last couple of decades. It has some nasty undertones. Mm-hmm. Like our shit is happy go lucky. Yeah, it seems like that was it's like happy, it's upbeat, it's up tempo. I can't like even tell he's gonna slap your girl and it still sounds upbeat. <laughs> it's like if your girl's out of place, it's a girl I'll slap. And you just feel happy about, and go lucky. I guess it's the vibe of the era. I don't know. I I, I guess so. Yeah. You know, ain't, ain't talking about having a great big bodyguard and possibly having to kill you. Doesn't lose the upbeat vibe though. <laughs> I don't, don't want to say it, but um, Aaron, did you, you want to add those. anything else? <laughs> but see, with those, with those, 
I feel like they tried to encapsulate the feeling of hip hop before it blew up at the parties and whatnot. True. Yeah. yeah. And I think it succeeded more. Like this shit is dark. Yeah. Like it's it's just it's foreboding. It's, it's got a sense of evil. I mean, look where it went now. Look where it's at now. It's cool to be depressed and not have any friends and keep a small circle and be petty. Well, no, your friends. Like you can have friends, but they'll all be dead. They just oh have to God. be dead. They have to be dead. That remind me, and I may as well make me bring this up. It's a um, it's a Twenty One Savage song. Who? Oh God. <laughs> And he, hey, was saying, he was saying the same exact thing. <laughs> it was just like, it was just like my friend. I thought some dead people or some shit like that. And it was just like, <sighs> I need somebody to say, speak out. Like, it's not cool to be depressed. Go see help, bro. But I mean, even though I love Vic Mensa, Vic Mensa's part of his album is about talking about conquering his prescription drug addiction. Do we blame Linkin Park for this? <laughs> I like, like, it's like, yo, 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 I mean, because I was like, thinking about it. Like, you might have rushed you with shit. When Chester died, like, um, my brother was playing a bunch of Linkin Park shit. He was just, like, mourning or whatever. And, um. That was rough, too. I like Linkin Park. I'm not that big a fan. I'm not as big a fan as, um, my brother and Anthony. You gotta admit, Linkin Park raised a generation. And yeah. what? So you have to admit, you have to admit. No, I don't. But, um, you have to. It's no, undeniable. I don't. Really I know. I, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, he was telling y'all he was going to kill himself. He was telling y'all in these songs. So did Kurt Cobain. I can't listen to Lisa Joe Joe Button said something yeah. about that too. This shit is not germane to hip hop though. True. This shit that's true. That, that they're doing is some rock music shit. Yeah. Like you don't hear dudes being depressed every two seconds in hip hop and they all killing themselves and taking prescription drugs. The shit is has not been prevalent in our music. It's just seeped in in the last you know fifteen well, years or so. Well, ready to die is pretty it is I see how to write but but that right there right. but but that is a rare that was a rarity in hip hop. That was a suicide note. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he, he was a, a lot of he was letting he was letting Puff know he was ready to be sacrificed to the Illuminati. Dun dun dun. Oh, dun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um and that is first period, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh Jesus Christ. And why did you do that? Seriously, why? <laughs> I was, I was... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't hit that button in a while. We haven't hit that button in a while. Oh, no. like Next cute. week we're gonna have finger poise on that button every freaking <laughs> um once is hard for me to be <laughs> <laughs> so I really hate to do this. I so hate to make Erica Badu's box out to lunch today. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> I feel like it's hard to describe this Baduism. I don't think it's that hard to describe at all. Uh, that's that's certainly another MacGuffin. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't okay. describe it. You can't. You can't eloquently describe it unless you've experienced it yourself. But that's what I'm like. It like look at all the dudes who've experienced it now. Yeah, like, I, I, you know what I picture? You remember the old the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston? <laughs> yes. When he comes when he comes down the mountain with a perm. <laughs> 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 That's body I have seen shit. That shit straightened my hair. <laughs> he came out of my with a perm. It didn't blink once. <laughs> and and I have these tablets for you, by the way. <laughs> Where'd you get those, Moses? <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the mountain top. I've been to the mountain top. <laughs> Wait a minute, Erica.
Take my dude's box of the mountain top. Is that what you say? It's, it's the burning bush. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle was definitely undefeated. He did a whole chapter on her. Yeah, let's go. Put an album out because of that shit, y'all. Come on, man. Did he hit that? Yeah, he went in. He went in. They got a baby together. They got a baby. I didn't know that. I thought he was just in her company. I thought he just got that residual bottle with him. They have a child. Only oh, really? only Common was able to come out unscathed without that. Oh my! Uh, Common was not unscathed. Yeah, well, Common, like, Rashi, like, Rashi, bro. She just pressed it on Rashi like like fucking Listen, Twilight. Brother, we do remember <laughs> the crochet pants. You did not no. outgrow the crochet pants yet. We That's still remember the crochet the pants. Beginning. And let's start from <laughs> the beginning. Let's start from our from our first known source. Okay. All right. Before Erica Badu, your boy. You talking about the snapbacks and the jerseys? Three, the snapbacks and the jerseys on Andre 3K. 3,000. <laughs> he, he, he was wearing a do-rag at night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was drinking that yak like everybody else at the table. You know, he was swirling around in the cup. His were kind of asshole too. The next thing you know, he's wearing a turban, and he's wearing he's wearing pants made out of some animal. Well, it, just in his defense, though, like I was watching the um the Dungeon Family uh, documentary. Oh God! And he was basically talking about like how you know they were trying to find yourself around that time, and him wearing those type of clothes was them just emulating a New York lifestyle. That is bullshit. What, what he found was Erica Badu's box, and nobody else dressed like that. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about um, the jerseys and all that. Durays and stuff. He just emulated. Okay, the but I'm saying they they all went on to dress like, you know, however, and he went on to wear a platinum wig and yeah. football, well, football pants. She she helped him find it though. So she unlocked his. Uh huh. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z reference. Dragon Ball Z reference. Right, right. Locked his potential. Yeah, the mighty box. Bottleism is definitely undefeated, though. <laughs> I don't everybody know, that was in everybody that was in that window seat video got a little bit of bottleism. I don't know because Ray Ray left. I can't stand you. <laughs> Dre actually broke up with her, from what I understand. That first break. He had to get out. He, he had to get I out. Think he, left her. Yeah. he had to get out. Yeah. Only way out is not in the box, I guess. I don't know. He chewed his own foot off, apparently. He you have to. Out. It's like some saw shit. Yeah. <laughs> let's play. Yeah. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> 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 Yo, that's I don't weird. want no box that fucking powerful. I think I think I, I might I be alright with the shit I got. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> kind of curious. I'm kind of curious to see what I'm made of. No, no, no! Don't get curious, please. So yeah, I'll admire from from a distance. And I and we'll talk about it in a second when we start talking about the book. But I mean, Common he dedicates a whole chapter to talking about how everybody is coming at him like, dude, you got crazy you put it? on. He says she was a soul succubus. I, I don't want to say that. I love Erica. Yeah, we all do. The whole world does. Is that what you said? That's, That's what, what I said. Yeah. But it, it, it's only because of how he he puts it in the book. Because the way he describes it, that there's there isn't anything else you can get from that. What's her sign? They're both Pisces. Uh, Bottleism is a sign in itself. I can't stand okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, represented, the world. It's, it's, it's represented by an unk and a head wrap. <laughs> an unk and some flowers. <laughs> I've seen her live. She's amazing live. You know. 
I really like her. I've had some excellent right, moments. Does she have control over that? Because she can't control that, can she? I think she can. It's not her fault she got them scores. Whatever, I think she can control. <laughs> But is that the reason that they did what they did? I feel like it's her personality and tandem and tandem with the bodyism. I think maybe the bodyism, I think her personality is affected by the bodyism. It complements. I mean, I think it just overshadows so much. Like you can't, <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's like. The same way, it's the same way we just got done talking about Prince. You know Prince, what I'm saying? Yeah. Prince, mm-hmm. yeah, they got that type of thing about them. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. not going to be the same. No woman that's been with Prince is right either. Mm, yeah, true. Uh, that's true. That's true. Look, I'm going to tell y'all, I was watching the Hollywood, the like Housewives of Hollywood or whatever, Xwives of Hollywood on VH1. And Maite was a very, very sweet and lovely lady. I actually met her this past summer when she was um, at the Printer's Row Book Festival here in Chicago and she wrote a book about her life with Prince. Uh, Is that the one, that the I, one he lost the baby with? Yep. The one that had Pfeiffer Syndrome. Yep. And she signed the book for me. She's a, she's a lovely, beautiful in and out. Very lovely lady. So her and Prince's second wife who is incidentally has been married to um, Eric Benet and they have kids, you know, now oh, whatever. Goodness. But they actually used to meet together in support of one another. They had to form a fucking support group. A Prince support group? Yes. The I survived Prince Nelson? Yes. <laughs> it's insane. Just take it one day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> it's crazy. Your ex-wife had a fucking support group. But they sit around uh-huh. and go, yeah, remember when he used to float in the room? <laughs> <laughs> the glide in in his silk robe. <laughs> it's like, I never really thought about that. I never really thought about like you know, romantic, romantical life. Like how he would how he would walk in the room as a man to his girl or whatever. Like that, that would be some shit to see. Was this like, before or after they put it on there is a purple rain too. Graffiti it's like, Graffiti it's Graffiti Bridge. Bridge. It does. Graffiti Bridge is purple rain part two. Don't sleep on Graffiti Bridge. I still have it. I have I it built like, up. I don't like Graffiti Bridge. I have it built up the courage to watch I it yet. Can, I, I just bet you don't. I don't like Graffiti Bridge. It, I'm totally judging that movie by its cover. You, oh, fuck you. You guys know I feel about Prince. <laughs> I'm not I going here. The, I might watch it tonight. I haven't built up the courage to watch it yet. I watch Under the Cherry Moon first. <laughs> so, first of all, Under the Cherry Moon is fucking phenomenal. I love it. Because I don't know phenomenal, but when, I like you want to buy, <laughs> when you want to buy a Sam Cook album, Aaron, where would you go? The record store. Of course. Okay. Mm. After you you cleanse yourself in the waters <laughs> of Lake Minnetonka. Oh my goodness. And by the way, that thing you just jumped in naked, that's not Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> Oops. So is this funny. an actual I've never questioned, is that an actual lake? There is an actual lake in Minnesota. Wow. In Minneapolis called Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. Blasphemy. Tim McGraw is doing a charity concert on Lake Minnetonka. Mm. Is he going to jump yeah. in and cleanse himself naked? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you're there that you just have to do it. It's in Minnesota. We got to record a show from Lake Minnetonka. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you all right now, I will remain closed the entire time that that show is being recorded. I'm not purifying myself. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you can't get your white robe otherwise. Come on. <laughs> I'll dip my feet in. How's that? Yeah, uh, that's not going to work. I'll dunk my feet in Lake Minnetonka. I wonder how many no, people visit Lake no. Minnetonka a year and jump in. <laughs> yeah. Because of the fucking purple ray, right? 
You know what? Maybe Erica is. Maybe that's what it is. She because bathes in the water of Lake oh, Minnetonka. That's what she did. <laughs> Prince got real cool. That's where maybe she, she dipped her herself in the in the in, in the font of Lake Minnetonka and purified she herself. She was bat- um, she was baptized there as a baby. I'm immediately reminded of my Right, Uncle. You know what I think of? I think of Phantasm. I, whenever I think of Erica's box, I think of Phantasm. This horribly crazy ass box that once you unlock it, it unleashes all kinds of shit. Oh my god. That you can't get back into the box. Like on Hellraiser? Yes! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Phantasm <Man>. 1 and 2. <laughs> oh no, that's hilarious. Oh my god. So. <laughs> that that jumbled mess was off to lunch. <laughs> yeah, that worked out. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> Folks, so stay clear of the Bodywism unless you're ready to change your lives. This was worse than last week when we went on about Patty's pies. I don't know what to do anymore on the show. <laughs> I was talking about pies. I was talking about pies. I promise. Oh, no smoke. I was just saying that. I was explaining that Joe's sex comments to my uncle and my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> they were excited. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta cover that on air one day. Oh my god! We gotta cover that on air one day. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I can't do this. Oh, so that that book we were just talking about that was all Moneta Blues by Oh Jesus by Questlove. Questlove, a.k.a. Amir, Amir Questlove Thompson and Ben Greenman. So this book we're talking about now um, from the segue from Out to Lunch is by Common, whose real name is Rashid. Rashid. Crochet Pants. No, it's not Rashid. Crochet Pants. Did he buy those or did he make them himself? Where do you buy crochet pants? (laughs) Where do you buy crochet pants? I think he made them himself. He just bought the waistband and worked from there. <laughs> do you think he was just sitting around crocheting pants? That's what I was thinking like the whole time was the two of you sitting in my classroom. Beating on a damn desk talking about you even give my daughter love. Like the whole time. That wasn't even me though. Like Anthony and... Uh, Mac. Was that, uh, that was Mac. No, it was you and... um. It was Mac. Hey, I. K-I, you no and K-I did that start no yak. <laughs> Mac too. Mac was right there with us. <laughs> Eric, I'm trying to absolve yourself from guilt. Oh, <laughs> that shit was hilarious, yo. How you run game on a deaf girl with cue cards, though? My man. <laughs> he wasn't running game. He was proposing to her. He was running game. That whole video was game. That was straight he game. He was proposing to her. There was a ring at the end. And yeah, how do you dope, say dope, no? Dope. Cue cards is dope. That how do you say no when that had to be cool. That's really cool. I mean, how do you say no to a man who stands outside and serenades you from your window with Mary J. Blige sitting over at the next house singing? <laughs> and you gonna find out she's deaf to the end of the video. He's like, get out of here, Mary. Get off he, my lawn, Mary. He did the two cards himself. Get off my lawn, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's this? Who's this woman dancing on my lawn? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. He did them two cards right after he finished them pants, too. Oh, stop. (laughs) He did not. That was a a big, blingy diamond ring at the end of that. Yeah. A picture of one. No, because he said, I want you to have my last name. Mm-hmm. Grown man shit. Grown man rap. Grown man. Grown man shit. Mm-hmm. You know what? I have never listened to Electric Circus. In I'm time. not listening to you anymore. We're done with I recently show. downloaded with the intent to listen to it, but I have not Get off the show. It. Get off the show. <laughs> no, I just remember Electric Wire Hustle Flower. Uh, the song titles like that. No, we've talked about this music. The song music was excellent. 
I kind of did I. Yeah, I that was the one with Jill Scott on it. You know, know that Jill song Scott. actually reminds me of something. It actually reminds me of Daydreaming a little bit before Lupe did that. Like it Daydream. was a big. I'm gonna listen to it again just because of that. Yeah, it's like a big. It's a conceptual song, just like I used. Um, I used to um, love her, but it's just about music and not just about mm. hip hop. Mm-hmm. And I love, of course, Come Close. I love um, the song called Hustle. I remember that one too. Mm-hmm. I like Star Sixty Nine. Yeah, I don't. Electric Circus is like, I'm the same way Anthony is with records a lot of times with Electric Circus. Like, I put it on and I'll let it rock. Mm-hmm. So I don't know a lot of the song titles outside of um, Come Close. Hold on, let me yeah, I'm not good with song titles. I, I, I love, love For me, that particular record is one, it's just one of those records. I went to that concert too, by the way. I was, I went to that. I was no, at those shows me. in Detroit no, in the State Theater. So well, you still I, perform I was, songs from that? Not that, not that many. I mean, come close, yeah. <clears throat> that was the last time any other. Yeah. That was the favorite. You know, guess who I met while I was out there? When I was Who's that? The so I ran into uh, blah blah blah. Um, uh, Saul Williams. Okay. The poet. Uh huh. Saw Williams while I was out there. He was cool. Really, really cool. But I mean, they were all like running together at the time because OK Player, you know, like that's like everybody who was in that, like in the Soul Aquarians, they were all in that OK Player world. Right. So you would see them all together all the time. The Roots would always be around. Common, Talib. Like when I saw Talib, the roots were there too. Is this before Twitter? Of course. So he wasn't as uh, angry. <laughs> well, he didn't have, you know, he had more time to stand out amongst the people because he had uh, less Twitter Twitter fights he had to handle. <laughs> Shouts to quality. Yeah, so... um any chapters that you want to specifically talk about in one day, it'll all make sense. And I will just say it was, I felt it was longer than it needed to be. Um, props to his mom for helping. <laughs> his mom was actually featured in there. Like the book almost kind of had a thing kind of going, kind of like how Questlove's book did, like where it wasn't just his own input. Cause yeah, it wasn't like it a was straight like, narrative. Uh, Right, it would change fonts because his mother would would like drop her voice in and then she'd be speaking. I thought that was and dope. Would go back. I did too. I like that. Yeah, I, it, was I, like, it was like like the uh, format with the um the letters before the chapters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that, that too. Was, uh, I, I, I like that. I like that. Too. I like um I that the chapters were named after song titles too. Yep. Yeah. So, what? Oh, what about you, Aaron? What? Any specific chapters that um that spring to mind for one day it all makes sense? Um, all back right now. Um, because I read this back when it first came out. Mhm. So I was just like recapping and um. The whole part with his dad, like, quote unquote, kidnapping him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was like, that was that whole part was like weird to me. <laughs> I um, oh. I didn't know he was in a relationship with uh, Serena. I Why did you know that? Yeah, everybody knew that. That was like everybody knew that. I don't, keep up, I don't keep up with stuff like that. I didn't wow, know that until man. I read the book. Seriously? I really don't. I don't keep up with their personal lives. Yeah, but I mean, it was everywhere. <clears throat> I'm, he was I, engaged like I said, to her. He was I'm engaged like the bubble to boy. her at one point. I'm like the bubble boy. Not not John. Not um. 
not Jake Gyllenhaal, but John Travolta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the bubble boy. So, um, let's talk specifically about, you guessed it, Love of My Life, Chapter 9. Uh-huh. Starts with Eric, the letter to Erica. The Erica Badu chapter. X-ray love. X-ray love. <laughs> <laughs> or he talks about um he did say some things in that chapter that I don't think I don't think anybody knew that he was actually engaged to her that whole time. Mm-hmm. And and that was a secret cuz everybody knew that they were together. At a, you know, at a certain point, but and he proposed to her four months in. He said, "But well, wait, everybody that was with her did." Was there some like I'm reading, like I'm skimming over it now? And mm-hmm. He's talking about looking around the house, and all he sees is pictures of Dre, Dre, Dre everywhere. Yeah. And they turn on the radio, and oh, sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> that was the <pissed> <laughs> Well, that was the time period. It was like about it was around 2000, and that was when. Um, that was when uh, what's the name came out when Sanconia was out. So yeah, yeah, I would have an issue with that. I mean, the song is a, it's a basically an open and po- open apology letter, and mm. you know I get it, and that but is seven five. As common, I would have an issue with it. Well, I mean, it's still seven's daddy. What are you gonna do? You know what? I'm getting the fuck out of here. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. Okay, so here's the other thing I gotta say before we say anything else. So when she breaks up with him, and she just she calls him abruptly. Erica calls him abruptly and tells him, "I don't want to be with you anymore. I love somebody else." And the somebody else is the BLC. Is the OC. <laughs> and the DOC is in the background. That made me mad. So I there, was like, was no! It was. No, was that a sober decision? No. Was that a sober moment on Badu's part? Oh my goodness. I was like, not the DOC. Anybody but my favorite. Anybody. <laughs> oh my god, it's not funky enough. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was like I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be somebody else. For some reason I thought that she she broke away from him and dated that dude from Dead Prez. But it wasn't. Was him, right? I thought so too, but I thought that he, he was, was the next one. dude that she I dated. That explains no. a lot. I didn't know that. But it, she lot. was talking about the DOC because he said... Yeah, I know. I know he said it's, about. it's I the DOC. And, and he was like, he said, I heard the DOC. And I was like, I was like, you fucking ruined his childhood right there. And hey, yo. That's messed up. That's disrespectful, yo. Well, well Prince, is another, <laughs> Prince is another constant. The comment talks about how they was hanging out at Paisley Park. Oh, yeah. That was one of my favorite parts. Prince was another constant. Between the two but books. I told you, I told you though. Prince, so first of all, Prince knew good music, one hundred percent. Prince was good music. Well, and 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 he knew that the shit that they were putting down and they were making was the shit, right. and so he wanted and them he, around. He just, he just invited them to the crib, like, oh, so you mm-hmm. do rap music, huh? <laughs> Talk about it over some pancakes. Talk I can't say that. <laughs> That's how it was. That's, That's how great. I and some great. How come there's no basketball stories though? Didn't Common play ball? He did. I was thinking about that. Like, why didn't I? Why didn't Common like? Because he was smart enough of a basketball player <laughs> to not play in his prison. <laughs> I'm not Look, Prince will, Prince will whoop your ass in basketball. <laughs> Put some heels on. Hey yo. And you know he um he actually notoriously he had to wear clothes that came from the Nordstrom's boys department when it is. <laughs> I saw that one time on a documentary. Who was it with? It was um Oh my god, it was Kevin Smith. 
Kevin the director? Kevin Smith, yeah, on, Kevin Smith went to Paisley Park because Prince calls him out there. Yo, get on YouTube and and type in Kevin Smith talks about Prince. That shit will have love you Kevin die and laugh. Me too. Kevin Smith have I love you Kevin die Smith. and laugh. And this shit is funny as crap. So. Oh, I say comic book show he got. Comic book man? Yeah. I've watched it from time to time. I like that one. It's all right. I've been meaning to go over to that shop, too. They seem like they got some shit I'll be looking for. If Prince, me- If somebody proposed to me and then had Prince and a bunch of other famous folks like Shaka Khan singing at my birthday party. How do you say no to that? First of all, I'm going to put that Badu on you that night. <laughs> <laughs> a channel and, your inner Baduism. And second of all, that that man is the man I'm marrying, 100%. See, but that's, that's Badu, though. That's that Baduism. That's regular to her. But the way he described his relationship with her and what happened to him when he got with her, she basically consumed him. That's why I called her a succubus. Because he said you can't you can't you can't blame a chick for clingy dudes. I don't think that that's what it is, because <laughs> it's not just him at this point. He was clingy in clingy in that situation. No, I'm saying how many dudes now have gotten like what? Do you, like, why do you think maybe Andre was like, "Yep, nope," because he's <laughs> like, she's like a whirlwind. It's just like Prince. She's a whirlwind like, pyramid. She's a whirlwind <laughs> pyramid. Uh, That's why she got with DLC. Yeah. But, I'm never gonna listen to that song again. I'm not. Look, that shit scarred my ass. I'm telling you. I was like, no, not the DLC. That's not the formula. It's not. Well, I mean, he walked away on skates. No, he didn't. I don't think so. They no. have a daughter, and he has his voice back. Perhaps it worked in the opposite. <laughs> that's that, that's that Ray Shaw Goo. That Ray Shaw Goo reference for you. Here. Uh-huh. It worked Storage in the property. opposite for the DLC. He got to take a dip every six months. We restored his voice. I can't do this. Oh, it's fucking hilarious. But no, that shit fucked me up. That shit fucked me up. I'm like, I'm sorry, but he he said he lost himself and then he gained himself when he left. You know. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. He wasn't ready. He did. He did say that, like, I don't know if you remember, like, she was kind of controlling that relationship, though, because he was in the car with her, and he was talking about Cree Summer. And she was like, you my nigga. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, you have to be controlling if you got a sucker drooling all over you. But he was talking about another woman, and you're talking about Cree right. Summer in the car with her. Ain't, ain't nothing Free Summer, another one. She another one. Now that you bring her up, she another one. I think got some shit with her too. It apparently, ain't got nothing <laughs> on that Baduism. I don't know. Yo. Why. I follow Free Summer though. Out. I get that vibe from um Ava DuVernay. Probably. I, I think that's unexplored though. I mean, I've been told that I have some sort of weird blue thing happening, but it ain't nothing compared to that shit. <laughs> as far as you know. As far as you know, exactly. <laughs> I don't even think of that. I hate, I hate both of y'all right now. It's somebody and they added crying right now. <laughs> we ain't gonna say no names. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did one time see this dude that I knew and he was like, yo, what did you do to such and such? And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, Every time I say your name, you get this glazed look in his eye. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he, just, he just stares and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> you get the Eddie Murphy boomerang look. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's that look. Um, it's that shit like when you clang the spoon and get out. Oh, and then yeah. it's before oh, you go boom. Yo, man, <laughs> 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 I'm 
Hey kid. No, yeah. I mean I'm happy that that he renewed and he became a different person and 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 all that. But that was a bit that that chapter was and it was short. But I was like, well, damn. Yes, there was a chapter. It was some kind of chapter. We got some and great was, music in common during that time. Well, no, because you hate the electric circuit. What are you talking about? I didn't say I hated it. it. I just didn't explore it fully. Yeah, I don't hate electric circuit either. Like, um, it was sonically different. I wasn't ready. Yeah, it's different from a lot of his other stuff. Well, he did say that that had not those things not happened to him, he doesn't like. She caused him to rise from the ashes like the phoenix, and then he may be after that. <laughs> he just didn't say that she's the reason he was on fire in the first place. <laughs> well, he did say that he was at the lowest point in his life, in his career, and in his love life. And he thought Is that, that why his... she dumped him? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, well, he wasn't in his lowest point yet because he was saying his lowest point you know, romantically in his love life as well as his career because she had just broken up with him. Like, right. He was on tour when she called him. She might as well have took his lungs with her. I mean, the way she did it, the way he described it, I was like, well, goddamn. I mean, to call somebody up on the phone while they're out on tour and say, with punctuation to every word, I don't want to be with you anymore. I want to be with someone else. Yo, when I read that part, I was just thinking like, she with somebody else right now, dog. And he heard the <laughs> OC in the background. Hey, yo. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's cold. That's kind of cold. At least it's you called them. Cold. At least you called them. Yo, I would rather hear about that shit by Telegram. Send me a fucking, send a raven in this bitch, like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Not a carrier fucking, pigeon, a carrier raven. Send me a raven, dude. She the type to send a letter by Peacock. <clears throat> That's crazy. <laughs> peacock can't fucking fly it. <laughs> <laughs> Be a walking ass peacock. <laughs> Rebound. Well, I mean, but well, what if, what if Common is scarred for life now? Probably. That's sad as shit. We don't want that to be true. It's hard to top the bottle with him. Oh man. I like his last album, by the way. His last album was dope. I do too. I love it. It was very Solange ish. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It was. They, they They go hand in hand. Those albums go hand in hand. It really was Solange. Wait a minute. Which one are we talking about right now? Uh, seat at the table. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I oh, just wanted to make sure you weren't talking about the dreamer the believer. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, we're talking about the last The one. last, the last drone he put out. I the one that got that song on there, uh, which is doing to my heart is unfamiliar. Yeah. yeah, I like that album. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's seat at the table, yes. I don't think I like the dreamer the believer. I do. I liked it. I didn't, I didn't, it had no replay value for me. None. None. I love that album. I didn't like the other one either. Um, the one after uh, after B, the one after the one after B. That's um, you're talking about electric, no, um, uh, Universal Mind Control. Control. I didn't. I, yeah. I, didn't I love like Universal was... Mind Control. First of all, I love um the song with him and Kanye. Like outside. I love outside too. South, 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 south. 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 <laughs> he told somebody you rap like you should be on the back of a motorcycle. But no, it's um, about the song too, called I don't care. Punch Drunk Love, which I love that song. I like Punch yeah, Drunk Love. That's the one that has Lily Allen on it, right? No, Lily Allen is the one. She's on. She's on. Um. Uh, the one right before now. that. Finding Forever was okay. Yeah, she's gonna find it forever. I love Finding Forever too. I'm a common fan. I'm a common fan too, but there's a decline for me. Yeah, yeah, there was a decline for me. Really? Well, I don't, I, I don't feel your decline. 
I feel like Common was on that. Like we talk about grown man rap a lot on this show now. And, um, I feel like Common was on that before a lot of his uh, his peers. Well, most he people has, that, he's been on that most forever. People that, most people that run in that circle were. Like I was just thinking, saying the other day, like all the Quali's albums are grown man albums. Mm-hmm. And, all of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. Most of them are grown man albums. Hey, I, last I, one I, of them. I don't know. I don't hear. I don't hear that much on quality. Quality was his right? baby, but it's still, it's still. It's certain songs though. It's certain songs though. You holding Gorilla Monsoon rap against him? <laughs> Why? Probably what it is. That's probably what it is. I like Gorilla Monsoon rap. I like that too. I do too. I don't. I don't see the problem here. <laughs> But I love quality catalog too, so catalog like, I like I, I like the album. You don't like you don't fuck with Airdrum like that. So Airdrum, Airdrum for me felt a little rushed. Was it? It felt a little rushed. It, I, I was under the impression when that came out that it wasn't a full album. Mm. It was more like a, a mixtape or whatever. I didn't feel that. You know what I think it was too though? Around that time. I had just started getting into the coop, mm. and they had um they had a song with Talib and Black Thought on it. Top two did a lot, both of them. Right, top five. Um, I can't remember the name of the damn song, but the coop. I started like I started like researching them, and like um I started catching up on them or whatever, and I was listening to them around the same time I was listening to Air Drum. So it kind of all like melded together. The air drum has its moments for me. That's probably my least favorite Quali album. Mm. I'm thinking. Yes, I think that's my least favorite. Um, yeah. I like that and, and Gutter Rainbows. I was going to say that either that or Gutter Rainbows. <laughs> yeah, I like Gutter Rainbows. They're both dope. Like I love the intro to opening the Gutter. Gutter Rainbows starts out very strong. What's for the voice? Oh, what a, what a, what a, yo, that's that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I like them both equally. Like, what's the one with everything, man? Air drum is the one with everything, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I feel like Common was like the, um, at the forefront of that, what we would call like grown man rap. He was one of, one of, one of a few people, yeah. I mean, again, with the roots, like their albums are very mature. It depends on what you're listening to. Like, Illidoff, Illidoff's Half-Life. It was very street. Right, yeah. That was a gangster album. But it was still, <laughs> it was, that was my shit for a while. Yeah, Illidoff's Half-Life was one of my favorite roots albums. Um, that, how we got over. What do we think about the tipping point? Um, I remember talking to Mitch about it when it came out. She said she, she wasn't really digging it because it wasn't the roots. Yeah. Um... I had that. I told you I had that on tape. I had the Tipper Point on one side, and I had Stillmatic on the other side. That tape yeah, was you one of them. the old four, so <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my I favorite tapes. Exactly when they came out, I'm gonna tell you why I remember when the Tipper Point came out because um, I had the Alchemist First Infantry, dope, and Mob and Mob Deep American Nightmare at the same time, oh, and so I was listening to all three albums back to back. That was a good time for hip hop, right? And then Death is Certain came out the same year. So. I love Death is Certain. That might be my favorite Royce album. Yeah, I think so. You know what I was? You know what made me listen to that recently? I was having a conversation with my cousin, and we were talking about um, how most classic rap albums they had they usually had the same producer. Yeah, straight through. Right, and that's what the case was with like uh, albums like Death is Certain. You had a uh, Six July, uh huh. And Premier only did like what that one track. I think so. Right. That, but so, the, the the album itself. Right. The, like it was, it, it his albums have this problem where they start out strong and then they waver a little bit and then you got a song here and there and then that's it. Definitely certain don't have that problem. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because everybody, everybody trying to recapture that feeling that it was Medicaid when they had like different producers, not realizing that all these producers are basically just bouncing off each other, um, trying to mesh the, the same sound. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
But now I said, now I said on um, Thomas Elmatic that he wanted to get like the best producers at the time from the hood, right, to contribute to their job, and it worked. But these are people, these are people that knew what they were doing, right? Too. Right. These aren't just like you know, it wasn't just like fast forward to two thousand and three, two thousand and four, where you got oh, I'm gonna get the Neptune, I'm gonna get Just Blaze, and I'm gonna get Swiss Beats, and it's gonna be a hit. Just going for big names, no. Right. He yeah. didn't. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He went with right. people that were integral. But I think to, a lot of a lot of people don't look at that when they listen to Ill Man. They just like, oh, he was the first one to put together a bunch of producers, and we can all do the same thing. And it don't work like that. Not these days, at least. Everybody's so widespread. Like technology, I feel again, is hindering creativity. Right. Like, if you ever notice, like, you got a lot of times people that understand music, they try to fit in to what the narrative of the album is. Like, if you listen to Good Kid, Man City, uh-huh. Pharrell try to fit in his sound with that particular sound. Okay. And the same thing with Pimper Butterfly. That's much more cohesive, I think, than... The That's kid. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't... <laughs> You don't hear producers doing that anymore. It's just like, um, I think it's coming back. But yeah. you didn't have a lot of producers doing that in the early 2000s up until like 2010. I mean, look at look at 444. Right, exactly. It's the one producer thing. That's not new to people that know better. But how many people actually know better? Right. But yeah, I would say um, Quest is uh, Quest's book is much more entertaining. Right. Common's book was like a straight up read. <laughs> Bless you. It was formatted different. His mom's input and all those letters and stuff they added to it, but he took the serious memoir approach to it. Quest love, like it was like having a conversation with Quest. Like sitting around listening to him. Yeah. I feel like he wanted to bring you into his world. Yeah, he did a good job of it. You know what I'm saying? Because he know he's not like the average person. Like I said, he didn't grow up in Philly the same way we did. You know? He was more like he was on a tour with his family. And then when he really was into the music, that was his focus. Right. He's saying I'm the host of the kid. I'm the host kid. Sorry, folks. We're experiencing some uh, technical difficulties. Do you, you got an unmuter? Uh, I'm not in the studio. Hello. I'm not signed in at all. I'm on a direct connect. Hello. Hello. There we yeah. go. Hey. But all I hear is a really horrible echo now. That's not good. What what happened? I have no clue what's going on. What's wrong with your blog talk radio? <laughs> yeah, it's like were you, really bad. Were you, still, were you still able to hear us? It's an echo on my end. It's an echo on you guys. That's like really weird bad. because now we in the same room together and I don't hear it. No. Yeah, I don't right, know. Echo. All right, we can push through it. Okay, I'm not sure why. But uh, that was an interesting conversation you guys were having. What, about race and everything? Yeah. Um, the one producer thing. I was just going to give out... Well, first I was going to do recess and then give out homework. Who is recess this week? Um, I figure to stay consistent with our theme. Plus, love has a new cookbook out called Something to Food About. Is that new or did we just miss it? It's new by Quest Love and Ben Greenman again. Oh, that's his name. Yeah. Now I want to know: Can either of these fellas cook? <laughs> Quest Love look like he ain't missing no meals. <laughs> Can't even no Doesn't mean he knows how to cook though. 
That's true, because I'm not missing no meals and I don't cook. No, gotta eat. (laughs) 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 Gotta stop messing with his weight. He plays the drums all day. We need we need Quest Love to be around for a while. He's gotta do something about that. I always wonder why is he still single? I don't know, he seems like, no disrespect, Quest Love, but he seems like he might be awkward around women. It seems like they all might. But, I mean... Yeah, I think... Um, Tariq is married. Yeah, I think people with more uh, out-of-the-box... Mm-hmm. That's my friend. Yeah. They have trouble And, and he got another book about Soul Train, too. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's on forty five dollars. Jeez. Especially when especially I was thinking about this too. Especially when it comes to men. Because a lot of times women are looking for stability. Mm. When you dealing with a guy that's like, you know, he like, I can't be here right now because I'm somewhere else right now. Child of Prince. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think um, that plays a part a lot of times when it comes to relationships. But I mean, in like, approach, the approach, though. Like, with Quest, like, I don't see him walking up to a woman. I think and... girls, I think uh, it's, it's some girls, and probably, and probably more, the more, um, the more, I don't know the, the word I'm looking for. Like the more artsy, yeah, those type of women, I think they go for that type of guy. You know, that's yeah. like, you know, he goofy, he weird. You know what I'm saying? He not like these other guys. Like but I know, guys I know, like him you know, don't always like artsy girls. True. You got to get to that point too, though. That's what I'm saying. The approach. Yeah. Like they I know, ain't gonna just I know, know females, you goofy. I know females that date so many like you know what I'm saying over masculine guys or super street dudes, and they get tired of it. So they just like I'm gonna go for a guy like Fresh Love. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean that happens too. I don't like, know how I feel about talking that. Talking to somebody the other day about <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I don't want to be your last resort. So we're still single because because we've been sitting around and waiting for to take stuff for like 15 years. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to be your last resort. You tired of waiting on the thugs to get their act together, so you decide to go. I don't through. look at it like that though. But I look at it and try something I different. Why well, I gotta be to something different? I was here the whole time. <laughs> because sometimes it takes people a long time to figure out what's going on with them. Exactly. And a lot of times, like the first thing women think about, a lot of times when it comes to like that thug mentality, it's just oh, he's a protector. Listen, I'm loving That's the it. first thing that comes to mind. You know what I'm saying? Like not yeah. saying that that artsy guy can't be the same dude. Exactly. But yeah, they're not looking. Say, they're not looking at that first. I was just going to say I'm a lover and a fighter. Oh, he read books. He in the he in the comic books. <laughs> he said he reads books. Yeah, <laughs> but look at it. Look, that's that's misleading because the dude that read comic books and is goofy and stuff like that, he used to get picked on. So you know he know how to defend himself. Depends on mm, the guy. Not in the same way. <laughs> not in the he same way as like the basketball player or the football player. Right. It depends on the guy. Because it's, it's harder to be a nerd in North Philly than it is to be a nerd in California. The Hamptons or whatever. So. <laughs> well, it depends on where you're, where you're a nerd in California at. That too. Because <laughs> so. I'm sure it was hard to be Kendrick. In his neighborhood. I can see that, yeah. Right, or even Lupe in South Side Chicago. But just let the record state that I'm a nerd in North Philly and I'm very popular with ladies. <laughs> well, the issue becomes, <laughs> like, the, like, the more you go on, the girls that wanted those types of guys that were, like, thuggish and do not... Those, those dudes, they become... They get older, and if, if they don't wise up, they wind up at places. Yeah. They get dead or in jail. And so supply. then the guys that were smarter, they're the ones that have the promising 
Well, well, the, the guys, the nerdier guys, tend to make out better with older women anyway. Well, then the nerdy guys wind up punishing those girls because they were angry about them. It depends on the nerd. <laughs> it depends on the nerd, yeah. <laughs> you know. But it is what it is. So the moral of the story for you young chicks, go get you a nerd. No, the moral of the story is... <laughs> I wouldn't even see that's the thing, though. I wouldn't even see that. The moral of the story <laughs> is for everyone to stop being so superficial. Uh-huh. Yeah, that too. Like you said, like we always talk about on this show, like the balance, like it's never any balance. It's always like, oh, he's too much of this or he's too much of that. And a lot mm-hmm. of times what we as men don't pay attention to these women with is that they want a guy that can be a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. You want some balance. Eh, we're hard to come by. Well, my thing is with guys like Questa, again, you don't always see them liking girls who like them. Like the artsy girls that like, oh my God, I love him. He doesn't want her. But why are you mad at the other girl who doesn't want you? When there is somebody who wants you, she just might be a little more, not as flashy. Uh Uh-huh. Just like you are. But. That's true. So that's another part he was talking about in the book. <clears throat> as far as like being flashy, that was kind of weird to me mm-hmm. because I didn't think about that until he started talking about it. So apparently, Black Thought is flashy. Exactly. And yeah, I yep. never, I would have never pegged them. Right. <laughs> so like that's how I, I always see thought. Black Thought being like that. But he was a hustler, so you kind of had to be flashy. I mean, at first. But, I mean, the way he was, is like, you know, y'all seen how he is in the, uh, what is that, the C2.0 video? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like clean cut with the, you know, this other type of persona. Yeah, like the dude that he became with the long locks and the huge beard. Yeah, that wasn't the dude he was. Right, it's like a whole 360. <laughs> right. But apparently that's who he was the whole time, behind the scenes. You let Quest love tell it. Well, Quest, I mean, look at Quest is different. Like, yeah. he really is truly different. Like, how many albums I've heard he had at this point is, like, bordering on obsessive compulsive. He claims he has something like close to 100,000 records or something. Like, over two, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Like He's a collector. <laughs> Crazy. So next week we're talking about pandering and culture vultures. Um, fun, fun, yeah. fun. So we're gonna be pushing the button a lot. Me and pandering the button. Pretty much every second, maybe. So we're gonna talk about academics. I'm glad. Yep. Four forty-four. Um, a little bit, and so everybody should watch if they have access to Netflix the documentary on one half of the group, the clips. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Malice, who is now called Little Malice, and the documentary is called The End of Malice. Really good. Is he pandering? He is no longer pandering. Now. I think he was at the time. I can see that. He feels like he can no longer do that. I'm gonna watch that. Anymore. I'm gonna watch that tonight after I watch Graffiti Bridge. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> it's more about the music. <laughs> Storyline. I, I want to read his book too. Around and around. I want to read his book too. Whose book? Malice. No Malice. Oh, I ain't know he had a book. Yeah, he got a genre. It's a long title to it. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, we got a title on that one day. Yeah. We got a lot of books to read, though. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I am too. Up. Up. It's part of our new campaign. 
Read a book, bitches. <laughs> that should be the whole series. <laughs> All right, Aaron, you ready for Game of Thrones tonight? I ain't gonna be able to watch it tonight. Damn! I know, right? Hey, the HBO app, I'm telling you, you got the HBO app? Nah, I was thinking about going to somebody's house to watch it, but, um... <laughs> the sweet potato You better there. find you a John. You better find you a John out there. <laughs> what time to come on? 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah, nope. Yeah, I wanna watch Insecure, too. Yeah, I'm finally all caught up on Insecure. I got a long day to drive tomorrow. Wait a minute, I thought you didn't watch Insecure, and I got Aaron watching Insecure. How you okay. got me watching Insecure? I put you D, dog. Nah, nah, don't tell me about <laughs> Insecure, I liked Insecure from the rip. I, um, me and Maureen binge watched the first season of Ballers. You know what, this season of Ballers is not really that great. I didn't get that far yet. You watch Insecure with Maureen? She watch it now, because one of her friends mentioned she should watch it. I wouldn't it. watch Insecure with my girl. And we had some good conversations behind it. And how do you feel about all these players going in the protest now? I'd like to see more. It's a good start. It is. I'd like to see more. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for the owners and the general managers and people like that. No, they're, they're, still, they're pretty much against it. Of course they are. Of course they are. Yeah, boycott the NFL, folks. Boycott the NFL. Well, that's boycott. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Yeah. So I keep hearing about yes, um, Michael Jackson. Eagles. They don't. <laughs> if the Eagles sign Kaepernick, I will be an Eagles fan again. The Eagles are so disappointing. I wish somebody would get on, like, right before they get ready to sing the anthem, be like, they don't care about black people. Kanye West out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to get my album. I want I want somebody to sing the anthem on the knee. Did somebody do that recently? Did they? Took a knee while singing the anthem. I don't know. I don't think this, it was while they were singing. Like some people did take the knee while the anthem was being sung. I think. Somebody took it at the end of the performance. I don't remember who it was. Mm-hmm. It was fairly recent though. Okay. I'm about to Google that. Well, I guess we gotta get out of here. Somebody's gotta read yeah. the for me. Can't get it. Aaron gotta ring the bell. <laughs> ring the bell, Aaron. Why well, I gotta ring the bell? Hold up. I'm not in the studio. Neither am I. It's Leah Leah Ticey is her name. She took School a knee while singing the anthem. School's out. Oh, uh, it was a white woman. What? Yeah, at the NBA. Leah Ticey. That's not how we end school. She lied. It's not. I'm just saying. She took a knee at the end of the it's national school. anthem. And school is officially out. Thank you, Aaron. Woo!